Preaching does not merely follow a season of worship in the Sunday morning service. It does not merely aim to help people worship. Preaching is worship. I have called it expository exaltation. By expository, I have meant that it is a manifest bringing of meaning and reality out of the text and making it clear for the people. And exaltation is the experience and the embodiment of an appropriate emotional response to the value of the reality. Now, what is worship? And you'll, you'll see how they map onto each other. Here's the way I would define worship. Worship is a seeing and a savoring and an expressing of the worth of God. Get the word worth from the word worship. A seeing and a savoring and an expressing of the worth of God. Take those one at a time. Let me show you what I mean. I mean a spiritual seeing. When we read the Bible or when we hear an anointed sermon that is faithful to the Bible, there should be a spiritual sight of the peculiar, distinct, self-authenticating glory of God in Christ. Some dimension of his infinite beauty and worth. I'm thinking of a text like John 1.14. We beheld his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, the Pharisees didn't behold it. And they looked him right in the face. So you see the difference? Somebody might hear a sermon, read a text, see nothing. See no glory whatsoever. That's not what worship is. Worship is built on a spiritual sight of the glory of Jesus, not just the facts of Jesus, the beauty of Christ, the preciousness of Christ. I'm thinking of a text like 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4. the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. When the devil is holding sway in a person's mind and heart, they can listen to the gospel. They can read the story of the cross and see no light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, the image of God. But if the Holy Spirit quickens awakens, removes that blindness, and shines with light into our hearts, like verse 6 says, then lights go on during the sermon. Lights go on as we read the Bible, and we see Christ not just as a factual person or a myth. We see him as a real person with distinctly self-authenticating divine glory. That's what I mean by worship is seeing the worth of God. What I mean by savoring is, let's take Matthew 15, 8. Remember, uh, Jesus said, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. What does that mean? That means you can be there on Sunday morning in a worship service, singing, smiling, listening, and as far as the heart's savoring of the truth, of the lyrics of that song, far away. As far as the truth of the sermon is concerned, you're just fascinated by this guy's shirt, tone of voice, use of illustration, logic, smile, 
personal demeanor. You like it. And savor nothing spiritual. So worship is not simply singing songs, praying prayers, lifting hands, kneeling, reading. Worship is seeing with the eyes of the heart the spiritual reality and worth and beauty of Christ and God. And worship is a savoring of what you see in some measure according to its true worth. And the third piece of worship is expressing. So we gather in services and we express with song. We express with kneeling or standing. We express with hands lifted. We express with reading of scripture. We express with confession of sin. We express with weeping, maybe. We express with silence and reverence and awe. Services can be built around all kinds of expression. And what I'm arguing is that when spiritual sight has happened by the work of the Spirit and spiritual savoring has happened, those expressions are miraculous and sweet and spiritual. That's worship. Seeing and savoring and expressing the worth of God. Notice how preaching corresponds now to this understanding of worship. Preaching feeds and joins this seeing and savoring and expressing. The exposition dimension of preaching uh, joins in and feeds the seeing, the knowing of Christ. And the exaltation of preaching joins in and stirs up and feeds the savoring dimension or the loving dimension of worship. People don't come to worship full and overflowing. People come to worship in need of help. Help to see, help to savor, help to express. Singing is a great expression and awakening. Or maybe I should say it in reverse order. Awakening and expressing of the sight and savoring and the expressing of worship. Singing and the truth of it does that. So does preaching. Preaching is an awakening and a stirring up and an expressing of the same seeing and savoring and expressing. So, therefore, <laughs> preaching doesn't just come after worship. It doesn't just aim at worship. Preaching is worship. It is a seeing and a savoring and an expressing of the worth of God in every text. Which means that this great event, this great transaction of preaching is a miracle. It is supernatural, which leads to the question, how can you or John Piper ordinary, natural person act this miracle? How can we do the miracle of preaching for the sake of the miracle of worship? How can these two events of worship happen in ordinary hearts like ours? That's where we go next time.